In 1 Timothy chapter 4, let's read the first 11 verses. Let's speak it together. Now the Spirit expressly says that in a later time, some will what? Depart from the faith, that's their relationship with the Lord, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Deceiving spirits that use humans to speak lies, they've been taken captive by demonic presence. They carry no fear of God and they promote false belief doctrines that enslave individuals to follow false deities. There you are. You can all go home now. Speaking lies, deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If you instruct brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in words of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. But reject profane and old wives' tales, fables, Exercise yourself toward godliness, for bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is in it and that will is which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. For to this end we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. These things command and do what? And teach. These things command and teach. These doctrines he's talking about, this is new age doctrines. And it's to draw humanity away from the fellowship of Christ. Amen? Teaching humanity is actually capable of saving themselves. So they're eliminating a savior. These doctrines call for cleansing the earth of all the old order of things, including humanity. Purging of society as a transformation of events so that the planet can be revised and reset into a new world order. A new what? World order. Mm. It's what we call the Luciferian order. Now, we got many religions out there, Mormons, Islamic, Jehovah Witnesses, Church of Scientology, Hinduism, this, that, whatever. Even got Oprah Winfrey doctrine. <laughs> Hallelujah. These are all antichrist doctrines. Amen? And, and they're all gathering together, and we've talked this before about all the satanic bloodlines that have now gathered together. And the operation of establishing the fourth kingdom to bring in the Antichrist. Again, there's either Christ or Antichrist. We've got to stop all of this other foolishness. You're either dealing with an Antichrist spirit regardless of where it's from, what kind of spirit, what its approach is. I don't care if it's a spirit of fear, bondage, whatever. It's an Antichrist spirit. It's all from the Antichrist regime. Amen? Amen? And its purpose is to prevent an individual from becoming free. To keep an individual in bondage. To bring the focus on self instead of Christ. In 2 John chapter 1 and verse 7, let's speak it. It says, for many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and a what? Antichrist. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things which we work for, but that we may receive a what? Full reward. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. Now that is powerful. Because there are many individuals that say they're believers, but they don't believe in the word of God. Then they're not of Christ. I have family members that call themselves Christians, but they will never believe in the Word of God. Because the Antichrist spirit is preventing them from going in and following the truth. 
He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. So if you're not abiding, abiding in the doctrine of Christ, you're abiding in the Antichrist doctrine. Amen? If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him into your house, nor greet him. For he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. In other words, greeting saying, it doesn't mean that, uh, don't get me wrong, uh, when they come knocking at my door, I try to witness to them. Amen? I start praying in tongues, they run. The only thing I see is the bottom of their feet. So he says, if you greet him, in other words, if you're going to allow him and share and allow them and partake of their doctrine, if you're going to agree with them, now you've opened the door yourself. Amen? But we disagree. Those are deceiving antichrist spirits. Anyone that does not follow the doctrine of Christ is antichrist. It's that simple. Revelation 13. But I'm a good person. You're an antichrist. I mean, that is the whole thing. You know, you can ask people all kinds of things. What you want to do is ask, do you follow the doctrine of Christ? Do you believe that Jesus came in the flesh? Those two questions alone will they tell you whether they're true followers or not. Now, of course, they may lie. Then you'll know them by their fruit. Lying is a fruit, isn't it? Amen. Revelation 13 and verse 11. Let's speak it. It says, Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. He exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth into the sight of men. And it deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. Telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image of the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Now let me share something with you. I saw this yesterday for the first time. DARPA is now created robots that can carry human flesh. Now check this out. And they actually are reproducing. They're able to reproduce their skin. They're actually now, they've got them in birth chambers. This was all on yesterday. So you're talking half human, half Mechanical. Individuals that are being birthed now. Of course, the question is, why are you doing this? And why is it allowed to be done? They are giving life to darkness. Does everybody get it? It's interesting what's going to happen. God willing, we won't be here to find all that out. Hallelujah. Yes, yeah, so I was pretty amazed when I heard that. And it says in verse 13 that he causes all both small, I mean both 16, I'm sorry. He causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads so that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. In other words, he's causing, no one can buy or sell without the mark or the number, even though <laughs> this kingdom of darkness, this is going to happen in its full expression. This is all going to fully come in the last three and a half years of great tribulation. So this is a world operation. Now, we are in the midst of its development and enforcement. I'm going to say it again. We are in the midst of its development and enforcement. These elite antichrist satanic bloodline families of the earth through their banking system, military, 
false doctrines, false religions, education, medical, political, and corporate influence who use the taxpayers' money and human resources of the world to accomplish their agenda. It is a carefully engineered plan, nation by nation, kingdom by kingdom, to gain control over lands, governments, and people. They are hidden in dark secret societies, corporations, including pharmaceutical, educational, media, to obtain world domination through deception and fear. This is where we are. We are in it right now. There is the development of it, and it's enforcing of it. You see that they're trying to enforce it already globally. I mean, to me, this is pretty amazing that people did not stand up and say no. They didn't say no. What was the restrainers? They didn't say no. This is where the body of Christ failed. Because there's too many that say they're Christians they're not following the doctrines. They're not close enough to the Lord to know what's really happening. We are to be the restrainers of the wicked. And the restrainers fell. Taking heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. And then what did they do? They accomplished the event where they prevented people from gathering together to worship. Amen. I mean, there were many that stood against it. And some would rather go to jail than submit to it. Because they're standing for what's Christ. They're standing for what the doctrine says. They know that this is end time last days. And we're accountable. And we're responsible. And we've been given a great commission to fulfill. This is about life and death. It's not about self. It's about ex expanding the kingdom of Christ and rescuing as many souls as possible before they really enforce all of this stuff. And God allows it. See, God's going to allow all of this eventually at some time after he crushes many because we're going to have revival. He's got to restore the body. He's got to heal the body. He's got to bring unity in the body. He's got to do this because it's his promises and it's his covenant. Pride has been the destroyer of many things. And so in this great revival that is coming, he will restore. He will restore so that the body can be prepared to leave. Then afterwards, he will allow the Antichrist to take over. And it will be three and a half years of hell on earth. In Daniel chapter 8. End time doctrines. New age stuff. Worships of crystals and idols and all kinds of goofy things. Eating Lucky Charms for breakfast, thinking it will help them. Daniel chapter 8, verse 23. Let's speak it together. And in the latter time of their kingdom, this is the Antichrist kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise, having fierce features, who understands sinister schemes. His power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. He shall destroy fearfully and shall prosper and thrive. He shall destroy the mighty and also the holy people. Through his cunning, he shall cause deceit to prosper under his rule. Sounds like the Obama administration and, the, and, and, and Biden and Clinton and so forth. He shall exalt himself in his heart. Yeah, that's about all. Antichrist. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. Those are the righteous. 
He shall even rise against the prince of princes, which is Michael. But he shall be broken without human means. And the vision of the evenings and mornings, which was told to is true. Therefore, seal up the vision, for it refers to many days in the future. Now, this vision was given to Daniel. He's talking about the latter time when the wickedness has reached its fullness the Antichrist will rise in forcing sinister schemes and prosper and prosperity to his followers. False promises. We're there. That's why everything's happening. People are doing it for money and power. Believing that they have eternal life in darkness. That's called deception and stupid. 1 John chapter 2. In verse 15. What's it say? Do not love the world or the things in the world. For if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is doing what? It's passing away. It's on its process of going under. And the lust of it also. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming, and even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made, made manifest. Why? Because they were taken by the spirit of Antichrist. That none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things exposing of those influenced by the Antichrist is happening right now all over the globe. That Antichrist spirit and doctrines will refuse to endure the fulfillment of the will of God in their lives. They are being misled with fear and pride. They carry a self-agenda, not willing to work out their salvation, but look for others to establish their false fulfillments because of laziness, and slothfulness, oppression, and heaviness. And Daniel chapter 4 and verse 18. Now Daniel has this dream and vision about King Nebuchadnezzar. He said, this dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen, now you, Belshazzar, Declare its interpretation, since all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation. But you are able, for the spirit of the holy God is in you. Verse 19. Then Daniel, whose name was Belazar, was astonished for a time, and his thoughts troubled him. So the king spoke and said, Belazar, do not let the dream of its or its interpretation trouble you. Belazar answered and said, My Lord, may the dream concern those who hate you and its interpretation concern your enemies. He said, the, dr the tree that you saw, which grew and became strong, whose height reached to the heavens, and which could be seen by all the earth, whose leaves were lovely and its fruit abundant, and which was food for all, under which the beasts of the field dwell, and whose branches the birds of the heaven had their home. It is you, my king, who have grown and become strong, for your greatness has grown and reaches to the heavens, and your dominion to the end of the earth. And inasmuch as the king saw a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven and saying, Chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave its stump and its roots in it, in the earth, bound for a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with dew of heaven, and let him graze with the beasts of the field till seven times have passed, him, passed over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord, the king. They shall drive you from men. He's talking to the king now. Your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And they shall make you eat grass like oxen. They shall wet you with the dew of heaven. And seven times shall pass over you 
till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. I would say God was humbling Nebuchadnezzar. And as much as they gave the commandment to leave the stump and roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be assured to you after you have come to know that heaven rules. So, I, so the Lord's going to put a, a, a heart of a beast in him. He's going to lose his huma, human texture. He'll become like an animal. And he will dwell in the fields for seven years. Verse 27, therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous. Being righteous means you need to be humble. And your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Obviously, he became so prideful, he began to gather for himself. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. And all this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. And at the end of 12 months, he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. And the king spoke, saying, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? Borders three mys and one eye. Verse 31. While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you. And they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you, until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and he gives it to whoever he chooses. That very hour, the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men and ate grass like an oxen. His body was wet with dew of heaven till his hair had grown like eagles, feathers, and his nails like birds, claws. And at the end of the time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my understanding was returned to me. And I blessed the Most High and praised his honor and uh, praise and honor him who lives forever for his dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from generation to generation and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing he does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth no one can restrain his hand or say to him what have you done at the same time, my reason returned to me. Now, for seven years, God allowed this man to become an animal. For the glory of my kingdom and my honor and splendor returned to me. My counselors and nobles restored me. I was restored to my kingdom and excellent majesty was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways justice, and those who walk in pride, he is able to put down. See, all of what you see going on here, they're going to go all put down. Why? Because of pride. And what they've done in promoting these doctrines of demons, and associated with these deceiving spirits, allow them to access them and possess them. It's all going to come to an end. Daniel 10. So we see here that here's pride versus humility. Amen. Daniel 10, 10. Is everybody there? Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, oh, Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to what? understand and to humble yourself before your God your words were heard and I have come because of your words hello set your heart to understand and what humble humble see one of the, do the doctrines that are being released these days are promoting self and pride they're not promoting humbleness self gods the I I I syndrome or promoting deities that are nothing but demonic beasts. 
And people are being deceived and taken. The Bible talks about itchy ears in the latter times. And we're seeing it happen all over. People wouldn't be in the conditions that they were if they were following the true doctrine of Christ Jesus. Amen. So here it is. We don't come to the Lord and say, hi, I'm your humble servant. That's called pride. <laughs> Man, you, yeah, yeah, I've asked people, okay, man, you pray. Yes, Lord, we're your humble servants. No. Puke. Never tell God you're humble. You tell him you're, he's, you're humble. He says, no, you're prideful. Because you think you're humble. <laughs> Hallelujah. Never say that. You come to him in submission. Amen. Lord, you are king of kings and lord of lords, and I'm nothing without you. Praise God. First Peter chapter 5. So some people wonder why they're not getting answers from their prayers. It's because they're telling God they're humble. Or they're saying, oh God, I've done all I can. No, you haven't. Because if you did, you wouldn't be in the condition you're in. Hello? Never tell God you've done, I've done all I can. I can. <laughs> no, you take him to his word. Lord, your word says... Your word says. Your word says. Does everybody get it? First Pete chapter 5. Verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. Be clothed with what? Not pride. God resists the what? Proud, but gives grace to the humble. In other words, he gives a way of escape to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. In other words, it's coming. Stay humble. Make keto humble pie. <laughs> and eat plenty of it. Praise God. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober means, means be what? Alert. Be vigilant, which means what? Consistent. That's the problem. Without consistency, you can't be alert. You know, people, the enemy breaks people off from the routine. They start compromising. They start, man, you compromise your routine, you're compromising your foundation. And the bait of Satan is right there. You cannot, okay, so it says, submit to God, resist the devil. So you can't resist the bait because you're not submitting to God. Amen? Then they blame everybody else. They blame God. They blame the pastor. They blame the ministry. They blame this. They blame that. Be sober, be vision, because your adversary, the devil, the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he can wipe out. Amen? Who he can deceive. It says resist him steadfast in the faith. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Resist him in the faith. Resist him in the faith. It means you're taking God's word. Amen. You're connected. You're not worse first. Hello. Worse first people are dangerous. They can never advance. Why? If you're always thinking the worst thing, amen, then you're in fear and you're in bondage. And then you don't believe the Word of God. Because if you believe the Word of God, you wouldn't be worse first. And, amen? It'd be praised all the time. Thank you, Lord. I'm grateful. Awesome. I don't care what I'm going through. You got it. And you're faithful to complete what you said. In other words, you're able to quote Scripture that brings you advanced, not backwards. Hallelujah. God resists the pride and proudful, but gives a freedom to the humble. Amen. Consistent and alert. Consistent and alert. Everybody goes through it. He says, look it. And may the God of all grace who called us by his eternal glory, by Christ Jesus, after you've been challenged a while, it will perfect you, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. If you haven't reached that place yet, then you're out of order somewhere. 
Amen? There's out of order. There's open doors. And people don't realize that they've opened doors. You can open a door anywhere. Devil knocks. You say hello. You enter in. That's where agreement of thoughts and so forth. Amen? Go to Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13, verse 10. Let's speak it. By pride comes nothing but strife. My flesh is bigger than yours. You know? But what the well advises what? Wisdom. That means the well advises with counsel. The spirit of counsel. Verse 11. Wealth gained by dishonesty will be diminished. But he who gathers by labor it will increase. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is like a tree of life. He who despises the word will be what? Destroyed. But he who fears the commandment will be what? Rewarded. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death or deception. Amen? Good understanding gains favor, but the way of unfaithfulness is what? Hard. Oh, hallelujah. Pride brings shame. Humbleness is wisdom by counsel. Wealth gained by dishonesty, they'll lose it. But those who work will eat. Hello. No working, no eating. <laughs> the fear of God and his commandments, which is reverence. His commandments are doctrines. The reverence of God, his words, commandments, is a fountain of life. So his doctrine is a fountain of life to us. Amen? In Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23 and verse 1. Let's speak it, please. When you sit down to eat with a ruler or someone in charge, consider carefully what is before you. And put a knife to your throat if you are a man or woman given to appetite. In other words, you accept everything. I want you to look spiritually. It means that you agree with everything that you hear. Do not desire his delicacies, for they are what? Deceptive food, that means it's deceptive words. Do not overwork to be rich because of your own understanding cease. Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Do not eat the bread of a miser nor desire his delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Mm. And waste your pleasant words. The deceptive food is new age doctrines these days to influence your thoughts so that you obey them. <laughs> because what you eat is what you become and what you will be. For as a man thinks, he'll become that. What you think, you will, you are. So the enemy's always trying to bring us a doctrine of deception, some way, to influence our thoughts in every area. Remember, that's where the main, that's where the battle is, right? It's in your thoughts. So he says, cast down all thoughts and imaginations that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. But again, the word says, work out your own salvation. It means you've got to work it out. Work it. Work it through. Nobody else can work out your salvation. Maintain your own deliverance. People can't maintain your own deliverance. Amen? You know, the Bible says when you become rebellious and open self up, seven demons come back stronger. People wonder why they're in worse condition than they were before. It's because <clears throat> they compromise. They became complacent and lazy and slothful. Not willing to work it out. Hallelujah. Oh, happy days. That's deceptive food. That's deceptive doctrine. New age. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 2. In verse 1. And you he what? He made alive. Praise God. Who were dead in trespasses and sins. That's all of us. 
in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of air, the breath of Antichrist, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. Hello. Yeah. Now we are his workmanship for good, for good works, and we should walk in them. Why? Because we've been rescued. Man, just that scripture alone ought to say, thank you, Jesus, and maintain an attitude of gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Why are people oppressed? Because they're not saying thank you enough. What you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Man, you know, everybody's heart gets touched here when we're singing that song that says, I thank you for loving me. If your heart didn't get touched, you're in trouble. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Awesome. Just to be able to say that and let the Spirit of God enter your heart and change it. Break every hardened area. Remove those doctrines that are influencing your thoughts. Exposing them. Because it's your responsibility to remove them. Amen? And John chapter 8. You know, the, the Word tells us that we're going to go through stuff. Amen? We're going to get attacked. We're gonna, you're going to get sick. You're gonna, all kinds of things are going to happen. But you're going to get through it. As long as you follow what He tells you. You'll have victory. Or else you'll get stuck. You'll stay there. John 8, 37. Jesus said to him, I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. His word is his doctrine. Amen. I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do what you see with your father. Huh. It's two different fathers. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to him, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. And they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. And Jesus said to him, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my doctrine or my words. You are of your father, the devil. Now, man, he's telling all of these all dressed up dudes, man. It's a Sanhedrin club. All of these high powered priests and so forth. They had control. They were rulers of all the religious stuff. He told them, every one of them. You are the father of your, the devil. You are children of the devil. These guys thought they were doing the right thing. Carrying the holy scriptures. The scrolls. Obviously they weren't. Amen. They weren't doing the right things. They began to take advantage of people. They began to take advantage of their authority and their dominion. They weren't setting people free. They were putting them in more bondage. That's why Jesus came. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you're not of God. Man, you don't think they wanted to kill him then? Boy, he rebuked the heck out of him. He, made, he slapped the hell out of him, made room for heaven. But they didn't allow the room to come in. They didn't allow heaven to come in, amen? Those that do not take the Bible as true are not of God. Must believe and follow the truth to be free. 
and you must practice the truth or you won't be free. And I'm closing 1 Peter chapter 4. The battle between pride and humility will be constant. It's within you. The old man is full of pride. The new man is full of humility. In verse 14, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14. Amen? If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and God rests upon you. On their part, he's blasphemed, but on your part, he's glorified. But none of you suffer as a murderer or thief or evildoer, as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him, be, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin in the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a what? A faithful creator. Praise God. The end. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you. You are faithful. And Lord, we ask for discernment and wisdom that we may be able to see those things and discern the false doctrines that the enemy brings forth. That we are not misled, but that we are led. Especially in these days and times, Lord. Where people have itching ears. Where people are be de being deceived by doctrines of demons and false spirits. Selfishness and pride and arrogance. Lord, we ask for your continued counsel, correction, and direction. And we're asking, Lord, that this word that was released today grow and bear fruit for your glory and bring to remembrance that we can discern and see in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.